Melinda6047 writes, I love looking at scrapbooking sketches for inspiration, but I often feel guilty that I'm cheating as it's not an original idea. What's your take on this? Glittergirl, can you help Melinda use scrapbooking sketches with style? Of course I can. The sketches you find on sites to help scrapbookers are certainly put there for your use. And the only thing I would consider cheating is if I took these sketches and wrote by Glitter Girl at the bottom because I didn't draw these sketches. As far as using them, reinterpreting them, and using them to create pages that I enjoy and taking the stress out of figuring out where things should go, that's not cheating at all. That's exactly why they were there. And at 2Bs we have quite a few different sketch resources that you might find um, useful. So these two come from two different free sketch classes. This one is by Kelly Perky. And it comes in, um, there are 12, 12 months of sketches, and there'll be a link um, with this video so that you can find it on the site. But it's under the free classes, both of these are. So this one is um, Kelly Perky's 12 months of sketches. And this one is by Jen Gallagher, and it's in a free class called Stretch Your Sketch. And what Jen does is ha have a video for each month. There were 12 in the series. And she starts with a sketch, but then she takes you through the process of exactly how she's changing it and getting more from the sketch. So she might show you this same um, layout idea taking, uh, maybe turning these six photos into one photo, or using what says photo and putting it as an embellishment. She shows you things like turning it around, um, making a single into a double, or vice versa. She shows you 12 different techniques for taking a sketch and getting a bit more from it. Kelly's doesn't include videos, but um, does include 12 different sketches, and she has guest artists um, every month. So you see one layout by Kelly, but also some layouts by some other scrapbookers in different styles taken from the same sketch. Now, there's also a, a lot of sketches in the weekly challenge section, and in fact, if you're watching this as it's brand new, this week's current challenge is a sketch. It's a sketch by Amy Heller, so you can give that one a go as well. But today, I'm going to take you through two layouts, one using this sketch by Kelly Perky and one using Jen Gallagher's sketch, and, and we'll see just how much I stay true to the design versus how much I decide to change. For this first sketch by Kelly Perky, I have chosen one um, that's quite plain and minimal on, this, on the sketch itself, but um, of course you can add more into the design or you can leave it quite plain. I love that sketches give you that freedom. And I've, I have a single photo, just an oddball photo that I want to use on its own because I don't have anything else that goes with it. Um, and this time I did actually decide to start with that photo and take the colors from the picture. So there's this um, turquoise and yellow. So. I'll show you what I've pulled out um, to start with. And this multicolored print is the first thing that I'm starting with and, and then I'm taking all the inspiration from there because this multicolored print had both turquoise and yellow and, and then a slightly lighter aqua shade of the turquoise. So um, I can take all the other colors here as a guide to, um, to choose the different things that I want in my uh, little kit of supplies. So this is from Sweet Day, a new collection, newish collection from Echo Park. And I'll show you the rest of the collection as well. Oops. So this is, has these frames on one side and polka dots on the other. And the rest of the collection looks like this. There's doilies, chevrons, stripes, flowers, hexagons, and a diagonal stripe. And the other sides look like this more florals, some gingham, an orange floral, a text print, some little cross stitchy type inspired things, and then an accent sheet. The accent sheet is the one with the doilies on the back. Um, so if you like both, you might need two sheets of this one. Um, so all sorts of different things you can cut apart. Uh, cupcakes, birthdays, balloons, bicycles, numbers, bunting, so quite a few different trends all on one sheet. And um, for those of you who do a lot of uh, Project Life type scrapbooking, there are days of the week there as well. So I'm going to start with just the, um, the frame sheet, but I'm going to keep these kind of on deck in case I need um, anything else to match the color scheme. So then the other papers that I have chosen, I wanted to go with something in yellow. So I've pulled this um, from, this is called Tickets Please, it's from This and That, also by Echo Park. It's yellow on one side and then has all these different um, tickets on the other. I'm going to use that yellow side. And then this one from My Mind's Eye on the Sunny Side collection. 
and it has this bright bright chevron on one side and a cream and and turquoise kind of a muted turquoise jade and um, on the other side and this is called sweet chevron and I think I'm going to end up using both sides of this a little bit mostly the um the solid the single color but a little bit of this as well I think so those are my three papers to start and then for embellishments um, I think I've definitely pulled more than I'm going to use today but I can't see what I end up with some things from nostalgia by my mind's eye this is a, a die cut punch a pirate sheet of different things and also the chipboard stickers because they have this same, um, even though this is a different collection than the papers, there's still this same idea of a muted yellow and turquoise. So I thought there was um, maybe some mileage in that collection. Then from the same collection as the yellow paper, this is the, this and that uh, alpha sticker sheet and there are three alphabets on here, a black, a turquoise, and a wood grain and then some borders and some other accent pieces. And also the October Afternoon 9 to 5 uh, shape sticker, the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And if you haven't looked at this one, even if you're not looking at the rest of the collection, I think this particular piece is probably the most versatile thing in the collection because it has lots of great little journaling boxes. I love this one that says useless um, but somewhat interesting info. And uh, there's a pro and con list. There's a priority ranking. I should do this now, tomorrow, or whenever. And lots of um, just different things that could go with absolutely any sort of um, of scrapping. You've got days of the week, you've got numbers, labels, uh, months of the year, times of the day, and there's only just these these couple that are very specific to the office. So um, it's enough that you could always, if you wanted to use every single thing on the sheet and you're not scrapbooking work, you could still use those on perhaps a card. Um, and if you scrapbook just one page about work, you could use those. So you could get almost, you, you could use every single sticker on the sheet. And that doesn't always happen in a collection. So I just wanted to point that out. And then some other things, of course. Um, some turquoise glittery thickers. That's uh, the... Um, scene alphabet from Amy Tangerine and some two piece exclusives these are Studio Calico mistable thicker shapes and this is the camera design we also have little sunshines and clouds and this has several different kinds of cameras including a Polaroid an SLR and, and an instant camera and they're mistable they're white fabric on top so you can um, spray whatever mist you want on them to turn them whatever color you can stamp on them you can emboss on them and um, you can do anything that you could do to fabric and it's chipboard underneath so unlike the DIY that I the DIY thickers that were foam where I couldn't put the heat gun on them because if the, the foam would just shrink the chipboard will take the heat gun so you can add um, you could add embossing ink and embossing powder right on top of the fabric if you like and then this exclusive set of stamps this is you can only get this at two piece designed by Studio Calico and Hero Arts and it has um, a frame, some tabs, days of the week, numbers, labels, times of the day. Um, so definitely going to use that. And of course I need some washi tape. So I've pulled out one that I think matches that pink pretty well. Um, that's pink with white hearts. And we'll see if that's useful. So that's everything I've pulled out. I know that's a lot for just one single photo. But um, now I'm going to take this sketch and get to work. Using the sketch, I've been able to recreate this design in paper form. So I cut the um, the aqua pattern paper to 10 by 10. So I have that nice big border of the yellow around the edge. And then used a second pattern paper from that um, Sweet Day collection uh, to cut um, one box that's a large photo mat and also the smaller tab up in the corner. And then I've added one um, sticker here as a photo tab and I know that this is going to be the placement of the writing. So I've followed this sketch quite literally up to this point and everything is exactly the same as it is on the sketch. And if I wanted to stay really uh, simple I could add the photo here, add my journaling here, um, and maybe add either the title here or here. And if I added the title down here, I could add some embellishment up here. And I could keep it very, very simple, and that would be, um, it would be done in 10 minutes, no problem. I'm going to add a little bit more embellishment by um, now using this as a starter and then adding some more layers on top. So the first thing I'm going to add is another strip of paper because 
my photo here is a little bit lost on the large photo mat, so I'm going to add a strip of the Polaroid frame paper to take it all the way across the 12 inch and then I can put the photo on top. I may need a little bit of another layer in there too, but I like the idea of something that will ground this. So I'm going to add that strip all the way across the design. This sketch starts quite minimal, but by just adding a few more scraps of paper, I've started to create quite a few more layers. I just used the B sides of the papers that I already had out, so that gave me three more patterns to work with without having to get any more full sheets, and I just um, cut smaller pieces to go behind the photograph, and then even smaller pieces to come up here in the top corner. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like something my style, so I'm going to go ahead and continue that with, by adding a few things that I would add to my layouts um, and using the placement of the sketch to know that my journaling is going to go here and finish it from there. Start with adding some washi tape to these layers. That's easy enough. Just want to bring that pink in up here. And I'll do the same down in the bottom corner by the photo. Then I wanted to use one of these stamps on um, this tab, and I love that because the stamps are clear, of course, you can figure out where it's going to go. So even before I get out my block and my ink, I know that this stamp is going to fit just where I want it in this label. Just a little hint for when you need to stamp something and get it right on the only chance, like stamping on a sticker. I'm just going to go to and back to the sticker sheet and find a place where there's some extra stickers. So up here at the top, this is the same material as the stickers, but I'm not going to be using that on any layout. So I'm going to stamp on here to see what ink stamps uh, nicest. Um, that way I'll know without taking that gamble right on top of the stamp if it's going to smear. Because all sticker papers are different, so some um, need a different ink. So that's the Jenny Bolin ink pad. And I, the other thing that always works on stickers pretty much is stays on. It's a very sticky ink. So I can stamp those side by side. And then I can see... And both of them are going to take, both would work. The Jenny Bullen would really need to sit and dry, I think. And um, the stays on is going to dry quicker. And they, they look pretty similar. There's not a, a quality issue there. So now I know what ink will work best on this particular sticker. So I should be able to get it right. There we go. I used a journaling sticker from the 9 to 5 sheet for um, most of the writing, and that's in the same place as the sketch, just over to the side of the photo book, and I needed just a little bit more room, so I've added that here. And then for the title, I've used three different letter stickers. The two smaller sets are from um, the this and that letter sheet, and then the larger letters are the glitter thickers. And I've put a few ink, um, ink splatters in just to uh, finish that off, but I want to go ahead and add a little bit more embellishment in these two corners. So I've punched out um, these little starburst shapes from the My Mind's Eye um, embellishment sheet, and I want to add the larger one up here and the smaller one down here. And I like the shape and the color, but um, on this smaller one, I didn't really want to use the wording that's in the middle. So I'm just going to layer that with something else on top. So I'll go ahead and put it in place. And what I want to do is use the embellishment to overlap all of these layers so that it then starts to bring everything together. So then I, um, I used the Today stamp from the same stamp set as the Adventure wording. And just use a circle punch to punch that from the extra of the aqua. Add a little bit of ink around the edge and a pop dot to the back. And then that can fit right on top here. And then the colors match, but I can change the wording in the center. But of course, I really wanted to use those mistable cameras. So I'm going to put the layout aside for a moment so that I can um, 
so that I can mist these. I'm just going to put it right on top here, I think. And because I have those two clusters of embellishment, um, I know I'm going to put cameras in two places, but this set has the same cameras in multiple sizes. So I'm thinking I will use three, but I'll use the same camera in three different sizes. So um, I'm just going to cut them out with the plastic backing intact. So I'm going to take this middle camera, which is kind of an SLR style, and come right through here. Okay, so now I can use I can keep them on the backing so that I don't lose any of the stickiness while I add some color and ink and my plan is that I'm going to mist them in a solid color and then I'm going to use this chevron stamp to come back and add just a little bit of pattern. I may change and use a different pattern stamp, but that's the idea. I'm going to use mist and then ink on top of that. I'm just using a Mr. Huey in a pink shade that matches the layout. So just spray over that. And then I could either use black ink over the top, or I could use another shade of pink, a darker pink perhaps, or I could use embossing ink and, um, and any color of embossing powder that would work. So just let that dry while I decide what um, color I'm going to add over the top. So I decided since I've done all the other stamping in black on that layout, that I'd go ahead and continue the black, and I'm just using the middle line of the chevron frame and I'm lining that up with the bottom of the camera. And I'm using the Jenny Bolin black ink. You just want you want a black ink that will dye uh, that will dry quickly. So you want a dye ink pad. I'll just take the centers of the cameras out, and you can use these. They look really cute if you put just a small pop dot behind them and make it uh, dimensional. And you can separate them before you color them so you could make the lens a different color, things like that. Um, but then just using um, a little bit of black ink around the outside edges to create a little bit of definition to the shape. And then I have three of those to add to my layout. Now you can um, do any colors you want. There's a, so much you can do and you get quite a few on one sheet. So you can take the same motif and make it look very different on lots of different layouts. Here's my first page finished and I've just gone back in and added things where I could pull things together. So I added the three cameras then went back with a chipboard border piece. It's just one 12 inch piece from the My Mind's Eye uh, chipboard accent sheet and cut it into four pieces so that I could um, duplicated on each of the the embellishment areas, so three different spots in the layout. To finish this little grouping up here, I added um, another tab to match the one that was down here so that I could bring that up. So each one has something that repeats. The, the piece that's, um, the border piece, the little cameras, um, these shapes here with the, the starburst, and everything is pulled together in this area here. So all the important stuff is right there together. The title, the writing, and the photograph. So that's the first one finished and that's going from something that's um, quite simple and could be uh, could easily be embellished in any style that you like and um, into my finished page but I'll show you another one using a sketch from Jen Gallagher. For this second page I'm going to use a sketch from Jen Gallagher's Stretch Your Sketch series and I'm starting with this idea with um, a large photo here, several small photos here and here, a title with a circular element or a curve here, and all this space for journaling. So that's what's in the original sketch and I'm going to um, use part of it and then change a little bit of it as well. So I've started with this much for the background. There's a lot of pink on this layout. I'm starting with a background paper from Crate Paper and then um, this pink heart print is from My Little Shoe Box and it has um, plants and, and things on the on the A side and then this tone and tone heart on the back. Okay, so here's my first difference. I don't have 
one large photo plus several small photos, I have two four by six pictures, but one that has uh, more of a focal element and then one that's a group shot. So I, this is what made me go to this sketch because the idea of it being all different faces made it a little bit similar to this idea of six separate small photos. So that's the first change. I'm going to change um, the the photo size and number. And I'm also not going to use photos here, I'm just going to use those two. But I am going to keep my journaling here and I'm going to look for a way to include my title on a curve up here. So I've started with those supplies and then I've pulled out um, some other things to go with it. Some are scraps and some are full sheets. So I've pulled out this um, bunting pattern from Hello Summer, which is green on the back and some journaling cards from Hello Summer. Those are both um, Hello Summers from Echo Park. This is also from Hello Summer, and um, this kind of turquoise quatrefoil. And then some other things, um, some accent cards from Crate Paper. That's the same collection as the, the pink background paper that's um, a pretty party. And then this one, Echo Park, that's all different cut apart sheets, and that's from the Dearest collection. And this one, also Echo Park, this is a cut, cut, apart, a cut apart border sheet, but this is from This and That. Um, and it has pink with dots on the back. This one has gray on the back. So I've pulled together all those different little bits and pieces. And then also, I'm going to use those same thickers, but in the pink color this time and possibly some chipboard elements here from um, my mind's eye. And I definitely want to use this, which is something I wanted to show you. We've got this new in the store just recently, and they're these little paper bags by Whisker Graphics. They come in all sorts of sizes, colors, and patterns. So I'll just show you this amazing collection of, of paper bags. <laughs> so they come in big, little stripes, chevrons, polka dots, white with uh, different colors of ink or craft with white ink and um, and then the one I've pulled out for this layout is one that's printed like notebook paper so you can journal right on top of the envelope and then or the pocket and then put things inside of it um, I love these and they are ridiculously inexpensive so you can uh, just stock up on however many like most of them are about 25 cents so um, yeah lots of things if you like to uh, put your journaling or embellishments in a pocket. So I've pulled out one of those to give it a try here. So now I'm going to go back to this sketch and see where I want to start. I'm thinking that this paper pocket is going to represent the, um, the two small photos here. And uh, this title on a curve, I'm not going to cut a circle just like this, but I want to take several different things like journaling cards or embellishments and just arrange them so that I get a curve shape here. So I'm going to see what I can find to make that work. Here you can start to see where the sketch is going um, on this particular page. So I've moved things down a bit because my photos don't fill that full 12 inch space. So I'm going to end up with a bit more empty space here. And instead of using the circle, I've taken various bits of pattern paper and embellishment boxes and cut them and then just kind of arranged them so there is this bit of a curve behind this one which has a bit more of a, a title. I don't think I'm going to go with a huge title on this. I'm still going to use the thickers, but I think I'll end up using them for the date instead of um, more wording. Then um, this space down here where the sketch has the journaling on this box itself, but I decided it would be easier to read the journaling if I put it on a card and put it in the pocket and left the hearts um, just as a pattern. And this had a a straight piece of paper or ribbon or something like that here with two photos on top. And I did start by adding a, a strip of paper all the way across, but I've actually covered up almost all of it now um, because I cut out um, the numbers from one of the embellishment sheets and layered that over the top instead of using the two photos. So I'm just taking the same sort of sketch but moving it around and by the end it's definitely going to look different than Jen's um, original layout. Now I did find 
that my layout, because I had changed the grouping up here a little bit, I needed something to divide here. So I've added a chipboard border piece across um, this part to then separate the photos from this kind of title embellishment cluster up here. But now I want to bring this idea of chipboard and the raised pieces into this area here. So I've taken some smaller pieces from the same chipboard um, sheet and I've just punched them out with the adhesive uh, covered up by that paper ever so close to being finished at this point. So I've added those buttons where I've put the pink embossing powder around the edge and I've just tried to scatter them around um, the different wordings and then added some candy dots in pink sparkles and pearls. Those are those different little sets from Pebbles that are just really great for scattering around and to make a little bit more texture there and when you're grouping different things and little random clusters. Then I added the um, the glitter thickers to add the date and my journaling is on the card inside the pocket and there's just one little thing that's bothering me and that's this little gap here. So what I've done is taken um, the Amy Tangerine stamp set which has some nice little small phrases and stamped one of those on um, the pink heart paper and cut it out with black ink around the edges. So I can just come back in here and tuck it underneath so that now I've gotten rid of that little bit of trapped space that was there inside that gap. And with that, I will call this one finished. So here's the original sketch. So I used that um, to get to this, but there's definitely some big differences in the finished version. And in Jen's scratch stretch your sketch series. She'll show you even more ways to um, to take one sketch and make it work for you in all sorts of different ways. So um, guess what? Your challenge this week is to use one of the two sketches that I've shared with you today. So pick your favorite and give it a go and check out those other two series of sketches plus the link to all the other um, weekly sketch challenges that we've had here at Two Peas. And I hope you'll find some sketch inspiration and I promise it's not cheating at all. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.